Hello and welcome to Data Science for Ecologists in R. In the last video, we talked about fitting a linear model to the data, but we didn't quite go into the technical details to keep it simple for the beginning. So today we're going to dig into these details a bit by learning how to estimate the parameters in the linear model. Remember that in the linear model there is the intercept beta 0, the weight parameters beta 1 to beta n, and the parameter for the error variance sigma squared. When we fit a linear model to our data, we want to estimate these parameters based on the observed x and y values. Arguably, we are usually more interested in the estimates for the intercept and the weights because we want to know how the explanatory variables relate to the outcome variable. But as I mentioned in the last video, we have to take into account the uncertainty of these estimates. For this, we will also need an estimate of the error variance. In order to learn how to estimate the parameters, we will need to introduce one additional tool namely the sum of squared residuals. The sum of squared residuals is a measure for how much the observations deviate from a given function, and I think it is best to explain it with a small example. Suppose we have the same data set we already saw in the last videos. Let's now go ahead and arbitrarily choose some parameters, for example beta 0 equals 2 and beta 1 equals 0 0.9. These parameters define a linear function which is given by this green line. Just by looking at it, we might feel that it does not provide the best fit to our data. To quantify how much the observations deviate from this linear function, we could now go ahead and calculate the sum of squared residuals. In the first step, we calculate how much the y value of the first observation deviates from the y value of the function at the same x value. This deviation is called the residual. In this case, we get a value of 1.35, which is indicated by the red line in the plot. If we now square this value, we end up with 1.82 as the first squared residual. Then we do the same for the second observation. In this case, we get a residual of 4.3, which results in a squared residual of 18.49. We then add this value to our previously calculated value of 1.82, since we want the sum of all squared residuals. This procedure is repeated until we reach our last observation. There we get a residual of minus 4, which results in a squared residual of 16. If we sum all squared residuals, we arrive at a value of 131.5. As I mentioned earlier, this linear function does not look like it fits best to the data. So we might try another function and calculate the corresponding sum of squared residuals. For example, the yellow function looks like it provides a much better fit to the data. This visual intuition is supported by the fact that the sum of squared residuals is much smaller with a value of 54.5. We could now even go further and ask ourselves which function leads to the smallest possible value. Luckily, there are mathematical tools to answer this question. If we apply them, we obtain the blue function and a value of 52.3 for the sum of squared residuals. Alright, now we know everything to define the estimate for the betas. We choose our estimates such that the sum of squared residuals is minimized. So in the last example, the estimates would be the parameters that correspond to the blue function. Of course, this is only an implicit definition of the estimates and not an explicit way to calculate them, but I think it is enough to get an intuitive understanding of what is going on. To clarify the notation, it should be mentioned that the head symbol above the betas is added to distinguish the estimates from the true unknown parameters. Let's now come to the estimate for the error variance sigma squared. A few videos back I introduced the variance as a measure for how much variation there is around the mean of a random variable. The higher the variance, the more variation there is. Now we will also need a mathematical definition of the variance to understand the estimate. Without going into the details, let me just tell you that under the assumptions of the linear model, the error variance is the mean squared error we would obtain if we had an infinite amount of data available. Let's just quickly verify that this definition is in line with our intuitive understanding of the variance. This getter plot shows data that was generated according to a linear model with small variance. Here the error tends to be very close to its mean, which is why the observations do not deviate much from the true linear relationship. Since the errors are small, we can also expect the squared errors to be small on average. On the other hand, the data that we had in the previous example was generated according to a linear model with a much higher variance. And since the errors are much bigger, the squared error will also be much bigger on average.
This shows that this new definition of the variance is in line with our intuitive understanding. Given this new definition, it would be straightforward to just use the mean of the observed squared errors as an estimate. It can be obtained by calculating the sum of squared errors, here denoted by SSE, and dividing it by the number of observations, here 20. Unfortunately, this estimate can only be calculated if we know the true linear relationship, since the errors are the deviation from it. In practice, the true linear relationship is unknown, so that this estimate cannot be calculated. However, we just learned how to estimate the true linear relationship using least squares estimation. And for this example, we obtained the blue line. Instead of the unknown true squared errors, we could now go ahead and calculate the squared residuals. The mean sum of squared residuals could then be used as an estimate for the variance. However, it turns out that this formula would systematically underestimate the variance because the squared residuals are on average smaller than the true squared errors. This results from the fact that the blue line was estimated such that the sum of squared residuals is minimized. To account for this systematic bias, we don't divide by the full number of observations, but rather by the number of observations minus the number of model parameters. In this case, we have the parameters beta 0 and beta 1, so we divide by 20 minus 2. This leads to an unbiased estimate. Alright, now that we know how to obtain estimates in the linear model, the next goal is to identify how the least squares estimates are distributed. This will be needed to make inferences about the underlying true parameter values. So stay tuned for the next video where this topic is discussed.